Don't use contacts, you don't know how lucky you are. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, welcome to this vlog. Today is Sunday and it's a beautiful day. It's kind of cold outside but sunny and my flat is so hot despite it being like 10 degrees outside so that's amazing. I wanted to run a few errands today. I wanted to go and buy some fall decor because yes it's officially fall. It's fall since two days ago. Everyone and their mothers on the internet and on TikTok are buying pumpkins and decorating their flats so call me basic but I need to do the same. Besides that, my flat is a bit messy. I need to organize and tidy up, so let's get started. So a few days ago, I got this huge package from Teddy Blake. So Teddy Blake is a brand that's based in New York and they design handbags and they are known for having the same quality as designer handbags but at a much more affordable price point. And they reached out to me and wanted to send me a bag just so I could like try it out and see how I like it. This is not sponsored, they just sent it to me which I'm so grateful for and yeah, let's unbox it and have a look. This is the bag. Oh, it's nice. It's very nice. I was able to pick a model from the website and I picked this one because I think it's a very simple, elegant, classic shape and I'll be able to wear it for years and years. There's quite a lot of room in here. Yay, I'm happy. I approve of this bag. I think this is the type of bag that like if you walk around with this on the street people will think that you have your life together. You know what I mean? I love it. So I got dressed and I'm ready to go and I have my new little handbag with me. Let's go! Guys, this is such a fail. There's no proper decor. There's mostly just like children's stuff for Halloween. This is so sad. Carmen? Uh, Carmen? C A R M E N. So let's try this pumpkin spice latte. Oh god. I tried the foam and the foam was good. Now I'm gonna try the coffee. Ooh. It's much sweeter than I expected. Okay, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed. You do get the flavor of the pumpkin at the end. I think it's just way too sugary. I'm a bit disappointed. But at least I tried. So yeah, that was a bit of a fail. Uh, I really couldn't find any decent fall decor in any of the stores that I went into, so I think I'm gonna have a look on Amazon. I think my monitor just died. It didn't die after all. 
So now I'm gonna do some work. Uh, if you've watched my channel before, you know that these are my study notes from when I was learning programming. I'm gonna start a new side project. It's not a software side project, but it's related to software engineering. I don't want to speak too much about this until it's done. I don't know if I can pull it off. If I feel confident while I'm doing it, I will tell you guys what it is. It got a bit chilly so I put on my new Nike sweater. I got this recently and I like it but like I ordered an XS and this is what came. <laughs> like it's actually a dress. So the other day I was procrastinating and I was watching YouTube videos and I stumbled upon this video of an engineer kind of trashing the coding interview process. So I thought I could talk a bit about like my thoughts and my opinion about the interview process for software engineers at big tech companies. Uh, one thing I wanted to share with you, I created a coding interview prep board. Coding interview prep board? Yeah. So like a board with a list of topics and concepts that I think everyone should study for a coding interview and I hope that this can be helpful for anyone out there who might be interviewing soon. So this board was actually created with a tool called Milanote and I'm very grateful to say that Milanote is sponsoring this portion of the video. So Milanote is like an infinite online whiteboard which we can use to plan projects, to organize our ideas, to brainstorm and to track things. I think of it as kind of like an online creative journal. It gives us this high level overview of everything that's going on in a project and it allows for real time collaboration with colleagues or clients. So I personally used Milano to create this interview prep guide for you guys, which is more focused on entry to mid-level software engineering roles. It has notes on data structures, on algorithms, it has a lot of resources that are useful to check out, and it also contains information about system design and specific lead code problems. This guide is no holy grail at all, but it lists all the topics that I studied when I first applied for tech jobs, so you know, if you're planning on interviewing soon and you're a bit lost on which concepts to study, I think this guide will definitely help you. Milanote is available completely for free with no time limit, so make sure to sign up using the link in the description and try it out in your next side project. When we're talking about coding interviews, we're usually talking about lead code style interview questions. And a lot of people don't like them because they can be quite hard and it's very stressful to prepare for them. And it's something that if you don't know the answer or you can't come up with a decent solution for these problems, it makes you feel very nervous and it makes you feel like you're not smart enough and that's obviously not a nice feeling. A lot of people also say that these type of questions are not a good way to assess whether someone is a good engineer. And I guess that's true because, you know, there can be good engineers who suck at lead code. I think lead code is something that you learn and you get into it. And it's fair to say that it can also be the other way around. You can be good at lead code problems but maybe you're not a great engineer, you know, despite being able to code and to think in this logical way, that's not all there is to it. When someone asks a complex lead code problem, I think that interviewers are more interested in seeing how you think and how you approach the problem and to understand your thought process behind it. And on top of all of this, they also want to evaluate your communication skills and how collaborative you are, because sometimes interviewers, they are willing to help you and to give you tips to, to make you reach a solution because they actually want you to do well in the interview because they're looking for someone to hire. So an interviewer is actually someone who's on your side. They're not like the devil. So if you have good communication skills and you're able to dissect the problem, even if you don't completely reach a solution, it might be that you still pass your interview. So from what I've seen in the tech industry so far for entry level and mid level software engineering positions, I believe that companies are mostly looking for people who are smart and who are collaborative, who can learn fast and who are willing to put in the work. Because these companies, they have the budget and the infrastructure to invest in the new hires. So they're not particularly looking for someone who has this exact skill set. Obviously, it is a plus point if the technical skills match the job application specifically. But, you know, it's not a must from what I've seen. And I think this makes sense because when you're working at a company, it isn't all about code. It is about solving complex business problems together with your team. And it's about increasing the throughput and the quality of the processes and the mechanisms of the company. 
and obviously these are pretty big things that are very hard to assess in someone, especially if you only have an hour to interview them. But in my opinion, lead code can actually be like a shortcut to assess these parameters in someone, at least if you're looking for the right clues. Also, it's a lot of work and it's very stressful to prepare for lead code style coding interviews. But at the same time, like you already know what you need to prepare for, you know? You guys know that I have a background in mechanical engineering and when I was applying to graduate positions, I had no fucking clue on what I should prepare for these interviews. Like there was no information online. There was no database of questions that people could ask us. I think that software engineers have it quite facilitated in a way because there's so much information online. There's other industries that have literally like close to zero information online on what they would potentially ask you. And in comparison to that, a coding interview is definitely easier to prepare for. So this is something I started doing more recently since I got this planner. Uh, it has this weekly check-in section where we can define goals and kind of plans for the week ahead. So sometimes on Sundays I like to do that and I also like to reflect on the previous week and kind of cross everything off that I managed to accomplish. I think it's a helpful exercise and it makes me personally feel productive but I would definitely recommend not to overdo it. Sunday evening is already stressful enough so you know make sure to not add to that stress even more by just focusing on the things that you need to do for the entire week. Make the list and plan ahead but then you know try to chill and to relax. And now I'm gonna take a shower and get ready for bed.